Today's video is brought to you by Ewin Racing, the best source for gaming chairs and desks for those long gaming sessions. We have a playlist of our Ewin chair and desk videos linked in the video description below. Save 30% off of everything using the discount code TECHDEALS. More details at the end of the video. If you are looking for an upgrade, don't do it looking backwards. Asian Persuasion comes in with a question. And it is, he is considering a 5600X to replace a 2700 for gaming performance. And he can utilize his 10400 uh, PC for multitasking. So for the price of a 5800, I have six cores, uh, six threads, uh, 12 cores, 12 threads. There was a word in there. I mean, there was a number in there. Asian, my friend. Let's take a walk. Come closer. A little bit closer. I can't smack you upside the head from that far away. Seriously. In 2021, you are going to go from a Ryzen 7 to a Ryzen 5. You're going to go from an 8-core chip to a 6-core chip. Yeah, yeah, benchmarks, whatever. Uh, yeah, it's faster on a per core basis and multi-threaded. It's actually probably not slower. Your system would be a little bit more responsive. If you had a 1700, I'd almost understand. A 2700 is enough of improvement over a 1700 and not so far away from Zen 2 to make a Zen 3. It's an upgrade, but it's not a mind blowing upgrade and you're going to go down in core count. Dude. Okay. I fully understand that when you look at benchmark charts, a 5600X will just run off from a 2700. I can't think of any gaming benchmarks where a 2700 would come out ahead unless you really dove down into maybe some frame times or frame pacing on a few select CPU intensive games. Cyberpunk will be faster on a 5600X, but it actually might be smoother on a 2700. It might not. It'd be smoother on a 3700X. A 2700 might be old enough that it really wouldn't be. But a 5600X in that game would not be a dramatic improvement in overall playability. It might give you a higher benchmark score, but it's, it's, it's two steps forward and one step back. You're upgrading but you aren't really upgrading. You're kind of sort of tentatively upgrading, but you're not. Now, to everybody watching this who's already left a comment in the comment section below and doesn't watch the rest of this, well, I award you zero points because you failed to actually watch this entire thing. I have a story to tell. In 2008, Intel launched the i7-920 four-core, 8-thread CPU running at 2.66 gigahertz on the X58 motherboard. I bought one. I still have it. I have shown it in several videos on this channel. I did an upgrade to a 6-core chip on it. I put it in a new case. I've actually done several pieces of content. I still have that machine. I've had that now for 13 years. In 2011, Intel launched Sandy Bridge, the second generation of chips, and Sandy Bridge was an upgrade, and it was a real honest-to-goodness upgrade over Nehalem. Nehalem? Nehalem. Over the first generation, I, I can never say that word. Dave. Yes. And if you went to an i7-2600K, then it was definitely a solid upgrade over an i7-920, especially stock to stock now. Overclocked, it's a little bit less, but it definitely was a nice upgrade. And there were some other platform features and some other upgrades that came with the um, the Z68 motherboard, which were nice to have if you otherwise could take advantage of them. Here's the problem. I built a machine in 2011 thinking, oh man, I looked at the benchmarks. I went to, no disrespect intended, I went to an Antec and I looked at their Sandy Bridge review. Uh, an Antec actually had the review out way before launch because they had a leaked chip, but... I bought an i5 GASP 2500K, which I also still have, and I have also done videos on the channel. I've since upgraded it to an i7-2600K that's sitting upstairs in the Be Quiet orange case at the moment. I like that case. Yeah, it is a nice case. So here's the deal. Um, I upgraded backwards. 
I went from a first generation i7 to a second generation i5 and very quickly regretted it. Is it faster? Yes. An i5 2500K running at 4 gigahertz will wallop the snot out of an i7 920, even overclocked to 3 or 3.2 gigahertz. Absolutely, positively, you run benchmarks, you look at the bar graphs, you go look at the comparisons. Holy smokes, why would you want that first generation i7 when the i5 2500K is so awesome? But the experience is garbage because it frame stutters all over the place. What are you talking about? This is 2011. Games didn't need more than four cores. Well, that's mostly true. Until you multitask and you do any, literally anything else with your computer besides play a video game. The minute you have a second monitor, which I did have back then, the minute you multitask, the minute you use Windows and have a bunch of web browser tabs open, you very quickly discover that the hyper-threading is not just hype. And I upgraded backwards, and it was awful. And just a year and a half later, only 18 months later, I had to build an entirely new computer. I built a i7-4770K, which I also still have. It's kind of cool actually having all those machines. That I put into a Corsair Obsidian 750D case. I've also so shown that on the channel on a Z87 board. And I would not have done that upgrade had I just freaking bought the right CPU to begin with. If I just bought the i7-2600K, then I could have skipped Haswell, waited for Skylake or KB Lake, and just lived on through it. I went cheap. I saved 100 bucks on the CPU on my 2011 build. And thus, I had to buy twice. And the wife had to listen to the complaining. You did have to listen. Because I still had my i7-920. And so what would happen is I'd play games on my i5-2500K. But if I actually wanted to, to multitask or run web browsers or do anything else, I'd go back to the old machine. So what if he's got two computers sitting side by side? I don't care. You don't replace a 2700 with a six-core chip. That is dumb and stupid and you're going in the wrong direction. You replace it with a Ryzen 9 5900X. Not a 58. You go to 12 cores, because then you're getting the trifecta of a, it's expensive, whatever. Think long-term. Think total cost of ownership and how long that machine will last you. You're going from eight cores to 12. You're going to higher IPC, more instructions per clock cycle. You're going to faster clock speeds. So you get both higher IPC and higher clock speeds and more cores and 70 megabytes of on-chip cache, twice the on-chip cache. It's, it's the trifecta of victory. Now, I can already hear the response, but the 5600X is $300 and the 5900X is $550. That's $250. No, it's not. Well, not, what, what? Not over five years. It's like 50 bucks a year. No, it's, it's zero dollars. It's free. It's absolutely free. And if you don't understand why, then you don't understand what TCO stands for. Total cost of ownership. Saving the $250 and going to a six core chip will simply force you to upgrade sooner. He has two computers. And I know he has some nice computers and I know he has some nice stuff. And the problem he's got is that at some point, even, let's pretend, let's just assume that for his game, six cores, 12 threads is enough right now. Right now. Okay. 18 months from now? Two years? Three years? It won't be. Nope. And then you'll have to upgrade. Well, maybe there'll be something available then. Maybe. Maybe. But in my experience, you just end up replacing it and you end up paying twice and you end up spending the same amount or more money than you would have if you had just freaking bought the right thing to begin with. I find the 5600X to be the dumbest, stupidest processor of the past year. It is utterly pointless and dumb. It's $300 for six cores in 2021. 2017 called once it's 8700K back. I, really? When the six core 12 thread, uh, and he's got a 10400. Yeah. Those have been available for under $150 for six cores, 12 threads. They have. Now it's 10% slower than a 5600X, whatever. It's it, it's half the price for 90% of the performance. 300 bucks is ridiculous. The only Zen 3 chip that makes any sense. 5900X. Is the 5900X. 
or for super premium users, the 5950X, that's for the person who bought the RTX 3090, 90. 64 gigs of RAM, three 4K monitors. I mean, that's for the super premium. Yeah, you just spend the extra money. But for most people, it's the Ryzen 9 5900X or the Ryzen 9 5900X. So, I am going to quote Susie Orman. Okay, go. You are denied. You are not allowed to buy a 5600X. I am going to deny you. In fact, I'm going to double deny you. You may not go to Reykjavik, Iceland and go to Elf School for $4,000. Oh my gosh. That was a real call, by the way. Somebody called Susie Orman and asked if she could spend $4,000 to go to Elf School. She did. <laughs> he tricked me. She double denied that. She goes, I'm going to double deny you. <laughs> so any of you who did the um, uh, downgrade, let us know how that worked out for you in the comment section below. In my multiple decades of doing this, I could pull out story after story of how dumb a backwards upgrade really is. If you are going to upgrade, move forward in time, buy yourself some time, Spending 300 bucks on that today is just no bueno. Absolutely not. Um, I, I just, I cannot stress enough how bad of an idea that really is. And that's about all I have to say about that. Ewin Racing has a wide selection of chairs to fit all shapes and sizes of gamers, ranging from petite to cuddly, they have something for every type of gamer. Not just sizes, but colors and material options as well, including red, blue, purple, pink, orange, and more, plus cloth and leather choices. We have over half a dozen chair and desk videos in a playlist down in the video description below. We also have a very special offer just for Tech Deals viewers. Save 30% off of everything using discount code tech deals using our link in the video description. We have used Ewin gaming chairs for three years in our office, sitting on them for up to eight hour marathon live streams. They are very comfortable and we are happy to work with Ewin to bring you this special discount and recommend Ewin for all of your gaming chair and desk needs.